Coming up next is Terry Payne with some public information you might find interesting. Well, that's better. Good morning, Terry. Hi, Richard. What are you up to this morning? Well, it's hot, it's dry, and my yard needs water, so I thought I would irrigate just a little bit this morning and uh, just trying to get it set up properly to begin with. I see you had to make some adjustments. Yes, I did. If we put water out on a driveway or some other impervious surface like the street or a sidewalk, it's not going to do anybody any good. So it needs to really stay up on the grass. Well, this is Utilities Director Richard Penn, and it ties in beautifully with our topic today, which is voluntary water conservation. Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about the lake level levels for a minute. Are sure. they important to our water supply? Yes, they are. The raw water supply is very important. However, equally important is going to be our treatment capacity. And at this time of year, we're at near maximum. We had, for this particular shooting today, right at 22 million gallons per day of water produced with both of our facilities. So whatever we can do voluntarily this time of year, it's very important to help keep those peaks down just a little bit and not run everything we have at maximum. Uh, why is it that consumption of water during the summer is almost double other times of the year? The primary reason for that is irrigation. We have a lot of reasons here in Hot Springs to want to irrigate from our lawns, our landscaping, things people really enjoy and things that are valuable. They have a lot of investment in those. And we need to be careful when we water to be sure that we use the water effectively and efficiently. Put the water where you need it and only put on the amount that will sustain the plants and get them through these uh, dry conditions until we can get hopefully a little rainfall. Well, what are some of the ways that people can easily uh, uh, implement water conservation? Pay attention, number one, to where you place the water. Another uh, opportunity that you'll have is to be sure you water early in the morning or late in the evening. A good guideline would be to stop watering at 10 a.m. and begin again after 6 p.m. The reason for this is because the hot, dry conditions of the day and the lower humidity causes the evaporation to go up and you lose part of that water to evaporation so you'll you'll be kinder to the plants as well I believe the plants like the water earlier in the morning or later in the evening as well what about every other day watering that is another technique that is very good to practice it's part of our voluntary conservation measures and some guidelines will be included in our new uh, version of the uh, conservation measures that are being put together by our Water Conservation Committee. Those issues are being studied, studied at this time and uh, when they're ready to be uh, presented to the Board of Directors for approval they will be and after that we'll be able to uh, implement those and make them, uh, publish them. We'll give them to you and we'll get those out on our website, make them available for everyone to use. Now the every other day part helps persons to know what's the right day to water. So if you have an odd numbered address, it would be better to water on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Even number addresses, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And if everyone can just take off on Sunday and only water those plants that absolutely have to have water, if you'll do it by hand with a bucket or with a hose and put the water right where you need it on Sundays, that'll help to conserve water and bring those peaks down. Are there any other water conservation tips that you want to mention? Well, yes. If you need to wash your car, the vehicle washing, it's really good to think about where you do that. So if you do this on a concrete surface, it's going to run off. How about moving that vehicle onto a grassy surface? Then when you, water, when you, when you wash the car, all that water will, most of it, go right into the grass. 
Now, can commercial users also conserve water? Yes, they can. The commercial owners and the industrial users are encouraged to be creative and to help your employees to help you. If you're an employee of a company that uses water in a process, look for ways to conserve water at work the same way you would at home. If you're at home and you brush your teeth and you turn the water off while you're brushing, if you're doing a load of laundry, you do a full load rather than a half load. Things you would do at home, try to extend that onto the workplace as well. And especially with the sprinkling systems, the irrigation systems. If your employer has one of those and you have a very nice looking place, watch those sprinkler systems to be sure that they're adjusted properly because we don't want those uh, sprinklers watering the highway. Well, Richard, thank you for giving us some ideas, both us as private users and commercial users, to conserve our water supply. That's thank very you, important Terry. In, a, in an area where we have abundant water, but we do need to conserve those resources. Next week, we'll bring you more City News.